gifts and giving, but also give a season of loneliness and depression. Uh, just this past week, uh, there's a, at least three celebrities I've, I've heard that committed suicide. How difficult could it be to feel so lonely in a world with so many people? It's times like this that I want to remind you that even if no one is with you, you are not alone. Even if no person is with you, God is with you. I want you to hear these words from the text in Isaiah 3. A couple simple words the text opens with, but it says so much. It says, Then the Lord spoke again to Ahaz. Ahaz was a king of Judah. He became king at the age of 20 years old. He reigned for 16 years. Ahab was not the best of people. Ahab is what we will call a corrupt king. During his 16 years, he set up idols and images of foreign gods. He committed all kinds of abominations by setting temples and worshiping those gods. He worshipped the god Molech and sacrificed even his own children to that god. Ahab defiled the temple of God by sending the gold and uh, some of the valuable things from the temple of God to other nations, asking people like the king of Assyria for favor and help. He was... Uh, perpetually wicked king. And the Bible says that God spoke to him again. So God spoke to him before and God speaking to him again. One thing we know about Ahaz from history, from our history, is that Ahaz was the inventor of the sundial. It's called the Ahaz Dial. The Ahaz Sundial. What's a sundial? Anybody know what a sundial is? A watch. It's the first watch. Then it's the sundial. So he could tell what time it is, but he couldn't tell what time it was. <laughs> so here's the situation Ahaz needs God, but he doesn't want to ask God for help. He's willing to ask any and everyone else but God. Maybe you've never been there, but maybe you know someone who's been there. Where if you help them, help him, help her, you wouldn't be helping them. <laughs> you know anybody like that? Yeah. Oh, yes. If you help them, it might hurt them. Amen. Maybe they need some professional help. They ask you for a couple dollars, but what they really need is a couple verses from Proverbs. <laughs> <laughs> they may ask you to stay at your place for a little while when they get back in on their feet, but they really need to stay in church. They may ask you to spend some time with them. They really need to spend some time with God. Well, maybe you don't know that person. But that person is Ahaz. The Amerians and the Sumerians were at war with the Assyrians. Uh, this historical event is called the syro euphemid War. It took place 735 to 733 B.C. And Israel was right in the middle of that conflict. 
Yet Israel refused to get involved with the war against Assyria. And because they refused to get involved in that war, the Amerians and the Sumerians decided that they would conquer Judah. And, and, and after they conquered them, they would force them to fight alongside them against Assyria. So they marched into Judah, taking over the country. But the city of Jerusalem was fortified, so they couldn't get into the city. So while they're inside the city, you can imagine, Ahaz is afraid. Ahaz is frightened. Ahaz is confused. He starts looking at horoscopes. He's so confused about what to do. He starts looking at false prophets and fortune tellers. Palm readers, and he's calling Miss Cleo. Maybe you don't get it. But he's praying to the moon. He's praying to the sun. He's praying to the stars. He's doing all this when the prophet Isaiah shows up and asks him, Ahaz, have you asked God? Oh. Mm. And that will bring me to my very first point of three that we'll look at, and I hope that you will take home with you today. Ask God. Ask God. First, ask God. There is nothing too little or nothing too big for God. Amen. 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 Scripture says, Ahab, ask for a sign for yourself from the Lord, your God. It can be as deep as hell, the depths, Sheol, the abyss, or as high as the heavens. You ask this from God, and he will show you this sign to confirm that he is with you. Amen. Amen. This, this is what the scriptures say in John. Jesus says this to his disciples. He says, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do. So that my Father will be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. James, it says this, many of you lack wisdom. If you lack wisdom, ask God. For God is generous to all and gives to all without reproach. And it will be given to you. But, James says, you do not have because you do not ask. Some of you have asked, and you didn't receive what they told James. We asked, and we didn't receive. He says it's because maybe you asked with the wrong motives. Yes, that's right. So that you may spend what you request for your pleasure. Ahaz was a, was a type of man. He said, look, I, I really don't want to bother God with my problems. You know anybody like that? Look, look, look. Ahaz said, I will not put God, I will not ask God for this sign or I'll put God to the test. You see, when Ahaz, he had already made up his mind not to ask God for help, but to ask the Assyrian king for help. Hmm. I don't know who needs to hear this, but before you ask me, you need to ask God. Before you ask mama then, you need to ask God. Before you ask your dad, before you ask Reggie then, you need to ask God. Have you asked God? If not, why not? It's not too small for him. You're not too small for him. Nothing is too big for him. 
Uh, we search everywhere for answers. Google. Ahaz was corrupt, God had a people to protect. 
And, 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 and sometimes, look, 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 look. Your mother may not be doing what she's supposed to do. Your father may not be doing what he's supposed to do. But that will stop God from loving you. Amen. Amen. See, God, he had to protect his women and his people. Amen. He said, even though the king didn't have it all together, it wasn't about the king. He said, forget Ahaz. He's just going to be here temporary. I, I, I got bigger plans than Ahaz, so I'm going to protect my people. He says, I'm going to give you a sign that I'm with y'all. Yes. Look, 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 Ahaz don't want a sign, so I'm going to give Israel a sign. Yes. I'm going to give Judah a sign. I'm going to give Jerusalem a sign that I'm with them. Say, so Ahaz, you want to depend on Assyria, you depend on them to your downfall. But there's a remnant that still depends on me, and I am a dependable God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So he says, I'm going to give you all a sign. How many of us take the time to look at the sign? To look for the sign? I remember my first car accident. I don't know if anybody ever been in a car. I remember my first car accident. Yes. My dad's car. <laughs> I was on my way to pick up my sisters for church. And it just so happened that I'm, I'm on Mitchell. Everybody know what Mitchell is. Mm -hmm. Mitchell, Mitchell Street. Mitchell has two intersections that follow right after each other. And instead of looking at the sign right in front of me, I'm looking at the sign way ahead of me. So I see a light turn green, the next light turn green, and I go at the red light. I was looking too far ahead that I missed the signs that were right in front of me. That should preach to somebody. Yes, yes, yes. It does. Take your time. Take your time. Look, look, look. Road signs are for our safety. Yes, yes, they are. Road signs are for guidance and direction. Yes. Road signs are for efficiency to make good use of time, energy, and space. That's the reason for road signs. Mm -hmm. And the signs of God are much the same. Yes. The signs of God, though this is not a driver's manual, it's the basic instructions you need before leaving earth. That's right. That's right. They are for your safety and for your guidance and direction. Mm -hmm. And for the efficiency to make good use of your time here, your energy, and your space. Mm -hmm. Watch the sun. Ahab. Says, I don't need no signs. I know what I'm doing. I, I don't need no signs. I know how to drive. <laughs> I've got this. God says, look, I'm going to give them the sign. So first they're going to watch you fall. But I'm going to give them a sign that I'm with them. He says, behold, the virgin, the young woman, will conceive and give birth to a son. And she will name him Emmanuel. And this is the sign. The child will be the sign. The, the, the child will be the sign that God is with me. Yes. Ah. That's true. What about children that can, can just bring joy to the heart? Mm -hmm. to, to, to just see a child smile and just bring peace to you. Amen. Yes. You see a child play and you just know that, look, everything, I'm stressing about all this and all that. And look at it. Yep. Little life, you got to care in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. And, and, and I can see that and I can know everything will be all right. God is with us. Yes, he is. God said, my son will be that, that the young woman will get birth to a son and she would name him God is with us. Mm -hmm. And they would know God is with us because right now while the, 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 the city is besieged and the enemy's at the front gate and at the side gate and at the back door, the enemy's surrounding us and, 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 and things are getting scarce and we're running out of resources because we can't get out of these walls so once we run out of what we got in here we just out of luck and he's saying look you, you, you're getting worried about all these things you're asking so and so for help you're asking so and so for help God's saying I got this I'm going to take care of you you call on me you 
look for me, he says, look, before the, the kid knows right from wrong, <coughs> I'm going to bless this city in abundance. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, he goes, look, look, you, you worried about what you don't have, trust me. <laughs> you worried about what you don't got, God says, trust me. God says, I'm still in control. I, yes. I, I'm still the God of angel armies. And, and, and though the enemy may look like you can't overtake him, there's no match for God. Right. The problem is no match for God. Amen. It's true. Amen. Amen. What he says. The young woman will have a son. Interesting thing about this prophet is there were three sons. <laughs> There's three people involved in this conversation. There's Ahaz, there's Isaiah, and there's God. First, just in the next chapter, we'll see Isaiah has sons. The prophetess gave birth. Mahershalal, Hashbaz was the child's name, meaning ready the spoils. The prey is coming. Immediately, this child upon his birth was a sign for the remnant that were still believing in God. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. God, while the child was still young, mm -hmm. defeated the armies of both the king of Israel, Samaria at the time, and the king of Amaria. Causing them to flee, leaving their goods, and overflowing the city in abundance. Then, has, then Ahaz would have a son. Ahaz has a son, we know, some of us know, who was Hezekiah. Hezekiah, while he was young, took over the reins of his father. Mm -hmm. When his father was evil in all these different ways, the Bible calls his father perpetually evil, Ahaz was a righteous king. So, so despite his father, that did not determine his path. Mm -hmm. some, some of us would say, well, I'm born in this dysfunctional family. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're born in that dysfunctional family so that God can use you yeah. to bring function. Amen. Amen. The generational curse. Yes, yes. yes. It was Hezekiah's call. Hezekiah was the second son. So the prophet had a son. The king had a son. Then God had a son. Amen. Amen. Yeshua. Hamashiach. Yes, yes. Jesus, who is the Christ. Yes. He shall be called Jesus because he will save his people. Amen. Just as the prophet's son saved the remnant of Israel, mm. and Hezekiah redeemed the nation of Israel, or Judah, mm. and also Jesus would save the world. Mm -hmm. um, and there's layers to this, y'all. <laughs> Jesus, born in the major, the Bible says that he took on human flesh and experienced the human experience to save us. 
as a sign that God is with us. He sent his son. And if God is with us, nothing can come against us. If God is with us, not the king of Assyria or Samaria can come against us. We don't need anyone's help if we got God's help. It would be nice to have your help, but I've got God and I've got enough. God wants to remind you today that he is with you and that there is nothing that can separate you from him. Nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Paul says that his love, neither death nor life, the angels nor demons, yes, yes. neither fear for today or worries about tomorrow. Amen. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power above or below the earth. Nothing in all of creation can separate us from God. God has revealed his love through his son. I hope that you would see that today. No matter what your circumstance may look like, you don't have to look outside of God for your fulfillment. You don't have to look to the soothsayer, the horoscope, the palm reader. Look to God. Look, you don't even have to look to the pastor until after you look to God. Amen. Amen. Because if God said it, that settles it. Yes, it does. I'm giving you what the Lord has given me. Amen.